Hi, my name is Sarah Alshuria and I am the TAC technical leader with the wireless team. Today, we will talk about step by step on how to replace one of the 9800 units in an online HA SSO deployment with no downtime. Note, this video only covers the wireless site. You're responsible for getting the switches ready as needed for this replacement. For easier explanation, consider the two units in a production are unit 1 and 2 where Unit 2 is the faulty device that needs to be replaced with Unit 3. Before you start, remove Disconnect Unit 2 from the network, power up and connect your console connection cable to Unit 3, but do not attach any network connection just yet. Back up your configuration. Okay, let's start. Software and configuration. Ensure that Unit 2 is up to date and it's in the same software version and installation mode as Unit 1. If it's not, you can upgrade it following our documentation before you disconnect it from the network and before you start this process. Then, you will need two IP addresses for Unit 3. The first one for the WMI and the second one is the same RMI address that was used on the replaced unit. And both of those addresses must be in the same subnet. Here I am. Pushing the redundancy config on Unit 3, which should be exactly the same as the config in the active unit. Step 2 Priority. Why the priority is important? When each unit is so get configured, established for the first time, both units need to be rebooted for the configuration to take effect. And the unit that has higher priority is going to be active unit, which means its configuration will be inherited. Therefore, the unit with lower priority loses its configuration. In this scenario, being covered in this video, each year is so already configured on unit 1. And the goal is to keep this active unit with no reboot, no downtime. Therefore, ensure this unit has the priority of 2, which is higher and then configure the priority on unit 3 to be 1, priority lower. This is a very important step to make sure the active won't reboot as explained earlier. If you had unit 1 with priority of 1, simply change it to 2, which is a higher priority, and apply it. This doesn't require a reboot. Step 3. Chassis number. By default, the chassis number is 1. Therefore, it is important to make sure that Unit 3 doesn't conflict with the chassis number of Unit 1. Renumber the chassis of Unit 3 to be what Unit 2 was to avoid this cold active active scenario. The chassis number requires a reload to take effect, similar to the redundancy config in the previous step. This reload is already included in the next step, so we can do it once and no need to reload this just yet. Step 4. In this step, place Unit 3 where Unit 2 were located. Connect Unit 3 to the network now, and then reload the box for the previous configuration to take effect. While the box is reloading, connect the RB port immediately back to back to Unit 1 to avoid Unit 1 from reloading. This is very important to do it at the same time before Unit 3 comes up. I have done this in my lab, so you can see where Unit 3 comes up as a standby hot from the console connection without causing Unit 1 to reload. After each shape built up, the WMI of Unit 3 won't be used anymore, as inherited the Unit 1 WMI. I hope this video has been useful. Thank you for watching. Remember that you can access Cisco Video Library for more videos.